Mr. Chaturvedi, can you tell us uh, the benefits from CSR to the different agencies like the corporate government, social workers, and overall the country? See, the, because of the corporate social responsibility, the society will gradually become more cohesive in the sense that if you have a cohesive society, it will help the organization for a sustainable business. Because it's a cohesive society, you are taking care not only of the organization, but also of the society. So this is yes. one of the most important, you know, contribution. Then it is also another contribution that is going for the CSR is, or the benefit is, that the employees, earlier the employees were being exploited. Now, because the employees happen to be part of the society, the organizations will be compelled to bring about policies, rules, system, such that the employees of the organizations are also feel empowered, happy, and they also contribute towards the organization because the organization is taking care yes. of that. Okay. Then another important benefit is the global environment. Okay. See, the global environment where I'm talking with reference to the pollution part of it, okay, you know, where the organizations have now become yes. quite conscious of the fact that they cannot have business operations which creates pollution all over the place. Environmental concerns, very yes. well. <clears throat> so you can imagine what has happened in the case of NTPC's Badarpur unit. Okay? The entire Badarpur unit was closed down because of the pollution concerns. Okay? So essentially, the, the CSR takes care of three important aspects. Okay? One is the environment, which is called as planet. The second is the profit, because after all, when you were setting up an organization, you also drive profit out of that. Okay? So profitability part of it. And the third is the people. People means society as well as the employees working within the organization. Uh, for the benefit of students uh, interested in CSR law, can you recall, illustrate some successful CSR interventions? Yes, CSR successful interventions have been, I can give you a couple of examples from NTPC. There was one of the unit of NTPC where there was a shortage of uh, drinking water for around the people. There were 25,000 people around the uh, NTPC's uh, factory where they were not getting proper drinking water. So NTPC, through its innovative ways, have created a system by virtue of which the people are now getting proper drinking water because the salinity of, uh, of water was very great because of the, you can't dig too much, too, too much. You have to dig too much to get pure, pure I mean, you to, to, to get water. But the NTPC brought about certain changes in the system of supplying drinking water with the result that 25,000 families have been benefited. Today, NTPC is contributing a great deal in the area of corporate social responsibility by creating three burned wards in different hospitals. Okay. okay. It's creating a cancer unit in another hospital. Okay, you know. It is taking care of the housewives in one of the units where they used to have a lot of tears because of chula. So it has become, it has brought about what is called as smokeless chula. You know. I think that is uh, remarkable. And, uh, and and one thing more yeah. I'll tell you, NTPC has set up triple ITM at Rayapur. NTPC has set up a huge hospital in, in, in Odisha. So not only NTPC, there are many organizations which are doing a great deal well, of Similarly, they are working. Yes. yes. Uh, now uh, coming to the law domain, uh, where can the law colleges find teachers, suitable faculty uh, to teach CSR law? And uh, are there any particular teaching aids that can be recommended? See, CSR law as such uh, doesn't exist, let me tell you that. Section 135 of the Companies Act provides for CSR. So, if anybody has studied in Tata School of Social Sciences, or uh, Indian Institute of Rural Management at, uh, at uh, near Anand, or MSW courses, okay, you know, where social responsibility is a subject there. Okay, you know. So all such people, and plus people like me who have practiced CSR over a period of time, is the, will be the eminent faculty who can be available to the law colleges for teaching purposes. Okay. Right. 
and uh, apart from the lectures are there any other modes like films uh, like models or field visits etc yes that would be useful yes see the course at tata shuru social sciences or nirma and other msw courses in different universities provide for attachment for three months for students to go to villages to study for three months okay then the whole process itself is driven by the fact that if you want to do a csr you have to do a, what is called as a baseline survey okay. for which specific skills are required which are taught in the these schools okay, you know after the baseline survey is done then you have to prepare a plan for executing that particular thing okay, you know and there afterwards the plan is executed so so the important thing here is that this the the law colleges have to get hold of people who have been through this entire cycle okay, you know and these will be the right faculty for teaching there okay, okay. and uh, the students who are interested in gaining in depth knowledge about the csr regulations compliances uh, you mentioned about that 2% has to be spent whether 2% has been spent or not is there any exemption uh, is there any carry forward now this is where the law comes in where can they go to learn these aspects see i tell you uh, again i am telling you there is a specific stipulation in section 135 which mandates all companies which are registered in the country to spend 2% of their net profit average 3 years last 3 years net profit 2% of that has to be spent for the purposes of csr now as and when the issues have come up like this in different companies the government of india has promptly issued clarifications so there has not been any kind of a litigation per se as far as the csr is concerned because whatever doubts were there in the minds of the people who were executing it they had been clarified by the government of india and the last such thing came in the month of august 2021 all these things came as you have rightly raised the issue that spending of money now the money has to be spent through a plan so a plan has to be uh, prepared and has to be dovetailed with the budget available to you so once the plan is prepared it has to be executed now execution can be done in two ways one is that you do it through a ngo the other is that you can do it through a contractor also the government of india is encouraging the employees of the organization to come forward and execute the plan okay, you know so that way the plan will get executed and it is very initial stages now because it the ntpc the country is the only country in the world where there is a mandate for you to spend compulsorily 2% of your budget for the purposes of uh, corporate social responsibility uh, thank you very much uh, avinash ji uh, the session on csr laws has been very informative interesting and i am sure that uh, the law colleges in the days ahead would have an exclusive Uh, at least an elective or optional course to understand the philosophy the functioning operation of uh, csr and uh, your presentation would be a beacon a model for them thank you